Glad you guys are back in it this week in your group's content. We're excited to get you going. So here's what we talked about. We were talking about the book of Jude. We used Little Red Riding Hood. I think it was a pretty good parallel between those two stories. And we talked about it, and we really took a look at the idea, um, kind of looking closely at the dead trees, the brute beasts, and the wolves. Now, those three things are actually one. When I say that, whenever I say dead tree, wolf, or brute beast, I'm really talking about the same kind of thing. It's this fruitless, godless, well, it's someone who desires to scatter the body of Christ and bring destruction about. So we were talking about um, kind of who they are and looking at it and understanding that the, the enemy likes to do like the wolf did to Little Red Riding Hood, just get you off the trail a little bit, cause a little delay in your responsiveness, your obedience, and then the next thing you know, you find yourself far off the path, giving the enemy time to wreak havoc in your life. And I invite you today, as you look at this, to understand that we as Christians are, well, we're fruitful, right? We're fruitful. We bear the fruit of a life rooted in Christ, and the life rooted in Christ produces, it grows out of the life of the Christian. If you're rooted in Christ, what comes up out of you is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Those things literally just grow naturally out of a life that is rooted in Jesus Christ. But there's artificial trees in the world. And Jude really talks about those dead trees, he calls them. And the dead trees have a different, well, I don't know if you can call it fruit. It's just traits. Traits of dead trees are grumblers, fault finders, braggards and boasters, uh, flatterers and scoffers. That's the way you can really peg a, um, a kind of a fruitless dead tree. And when you see that in the church, you have to take actions. Jude says that these are people who divide you, who follow their mere natural instincts and do not have the Spirit. So what it tells us is we who have the fruits of the Spirit are rooted in Christ and the fruits of the Spirit grow out of us. Those who don't have the Spirit, the fruits... I would say of Antichrist grew out of them, the grumbling, fault-finding, flattery, scoffer, braggart-type traits. So when we look at that, we understand that we have to guard against certain things. To guard, we must contend, we must con stay in the love of God, and we must snatch people from destruction. So I invite you, as you go into your questions tonight, make sure you're leaning into the gospel call on your life to be people who are contending for your faith, to be people who are resting in the love of God in Christ Jesus for you and for the world around you and also your first responders. Reach in and snatch people back from the brink of destruction. Here we go. We're going to get into some group questions. I'm glad you're here to be a part of it. Hey kids, you get to be up first to answer your first question, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to have you read, um, or you can have one of the adults in the room read Jude verses 12 and 13, and I'll be right back with your first question. When Jude's describing these kind of dead trees. Uh, in the Little Red Riding Hood story, we would have called it the wolf. When Jude, Jude is describing them, he used a lot of um, images. He, he said things about them. What of those images in verse 12 and 13 really jumped out at you? What, what seemed like most clear in your head as a picture of who they would have been? Question number two, why do you think Jude describes these people with these specific images in mind? Do 
Jude is warning us about ungodly people who try to sneak in and get into our lives. Think about the people you spend your time with at school, on sports teams, different things like that. Think about the people you see during the week. Are these people encouraging you to live a godly life? Or are they more fitting of the description in verse 12 and 13? This last little section, parents, on this, I would like to make sure you have a conversation with your kids around this, uh, that second part that starts, if not. Please take some time and see how your kids can, instead of being steered away from the path, that they can be people who are snatching people back from destruction. Have a great time, kids. I hope you've enjoyed your group's uh, questions and you were able to engage. I'm so glad you're a part of our group's ministry, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great week at school or wherever you're off to. Yeah, it's probably school. You should probably be in school. (laughs) Have a great week at school. Okay, adults, you're up. It is your turn for groups questions. As you guys lean in, here's the thing I want to keep challenging towards our groups. You've been in devotions. You've been in church. You've heard the teaching. You've you've read the, the scriptures. You're a part of it. As you go into these questions, really lean in. Ask the deeper questions. If you want to go deeper and really work on it, you have the Word of God right in front of you. Don't be afraid to open it up. Let Scripture interpret Scripture and see if there's a Scripture you remember from your childhood that speaks into this. Go back to it and look at it and say, hey, guys, what do we feel about this question when I read this Scripture? Really have fun. If you want to go deep, my friends, you have the shovel. Get your dig on. Have some fun. Work together to get into the Word of God and see how that brings about godly fruit in your life. Question number one. Here we go. How do you know if a leader or just a fellow believer is producing bad fruit? I think this question is very straightforward. Don't be afraid to be blunt, honest, and concise in your answers, but also if there's disagreement, spend some time wrestling through it. Don't just let each other off easy. Have some fun. Wrestle with the Word of God in your group by answering that question. How do you know if a leader or believer is producing bad fruit? Question number two. Jesus uses the words to make every effort when speaking about entering through the narrow door. What does make every effort mean in your life? How would you interpret, what would be your fuller description of making every effort? What would that look like in your life? Question number three, uh, take a minute and read Jude 17 through 21 and then flip back to the, to the video here and I'll ask the next question. This question, th- this is good. I think you guys could, this, is, this would be a good time for some vulnerability in groups. Do you feel like there are natural instincts in your life that are not from the Holy Spirit. How do you keep yourself in God's love? Friends, don't be ashamed to answer this. There are definitely some instincts in my life that are not from the Holy Spirit. There are actually things that um, oppose that in my life. So don't be afraid to take some time, really open up and discuss this with your groups. Do you feel like there are natural instincts in your life that are not from the Holy Spirit? And how do you keep yourself in God's love? At the last group's video, I had promised you uh, a clip of Matt off-roading on a Segway in volleyball shorts, was it? So it turns out two things didn't happen. 
both of them resulting in grievous disappointment for me. There's no video of Matt segueing because there was a haunted forest where he went. So they didn't have the off-road segue tour, which I thought you got to go independently. <laughs> You're like a herd of cats on segways. Um, so we don't have that video, and I'm super sorry about it. I wish I had words of comfort that could alleviate your sadness at not getting to see um, the gangly youth on a Segway in volleyball shorts. <laughs> but uh, but the good times will come, I promise. We will do something with that candlestick. We will <laughs> make magic happen. <laughs>